Today is Wednesday, February 27th. It's a big news day today. What to watch for as President Trump meets with North Korea's leader for the second time. And all eyes on Capitol Hill as Trump's former lawyer testifies in public and under oath. Plus a new tech task force, Walmart's controversy, and a teenager making soccer history. Welcome, welcome to the Newsworthy. All the day's news in less than 10 minutes. Fast, fair, fun, and on the go. I'm Erica Mandy. Thanks so much for being here. You ready? Let's do this. The world is watching. Today is the first day of the second round of meetings between President Trump and North Korean leader Kim Jong-un. The two leaders are meeting early this morning Eastern time, although it'll be the evening in Vietnam. This second summit comes eight months after the first one, which was a historic meeting in Singapore. Remember, that was the first time a sitting U.S. president met in person with a North Korean leader. Both leaders signed an agreement at that time for denuclearization, but most experts say it was pretty vague. This time around, Reuters reports President Trump is facing more pressure to move past breaking the ice and instead make a concrete deal with North Korea. The New York Times reports Trump may even be willing to pull back a bit on U.S. demands to get a real deal done. Think wanting to limit North Korea's nukes instead of demanding the country get rid of them altogether. The latest round of meetings is happening in Hanoi in Vietnam, which, by the way, is meant to be a sign to North Korea. Vietnam's economy grew once it decided to get along with the U.S., yet still has authoritarian rule. Expect more details soon about day one of the second Trump-Kim summit. Even as President Trump is out of the country, he will be the talk of Washington, D.C., during what some people are calling must-see TV. President Trump's former lawyer and fixer, Michael Cohen, will testify today publicly and under oath. The AP reports he's expected to talk about what he'll claim is evidence that President Trump lied, cheated, and committed crimes. The testimony is set to happen later this morning on Capitol Hill in front of the House Oversight and Reform Committee and in front of news cameras. Remember, Cohen was once loyal to Trump, but he turned on his former boss and started cooperating with the special counsel in the Russia investigation. He pleaded guilty to lying to Congress and committing campaign finance violations. He says it was all at the direction of the president. But the White House continues to call Cohen a liar who was just looking for a shorter prison sentence for himself. Cohen is scheduled to start his three-year prison sentence in May. And Bloomberg reports he was also just disbarred in New York, which means he can no longer practice law. Thousands of children who crossed the U.S.-Mexico border say they were sexually abused while in U.S. government custody. USA Today reports newly released government documents show more than 4,500 children said they were assaulted after crossing the border alone or separated from their families. The allegations go back about four years. Most say they were abused by other minors, but some point to the adults in the local shelters. Officials at the Department of Health and Human Services say they are taking the allegations seriously and plan to investigate. The U.S. economy is strong with a side of caution and conflicting signals. That's what the Federal Reserve chairman told a Senate committee this week. CNBC reports the Fed chairman Jerome Powell says the Fed is keeping an eye on challenges overseas in recent months, mostly with China and Europe. You've got trade tensions between the U.S. and China, as well as Brexit, and how Britain leaving the European Union could affect trade in global markets. The Washington Post says Powell also called it very troubling that so many Americans aren't working even with a record number of job openings in the country. Many people either don't have the skills for the jobs or they don't live where the jobs are. Powell also urged lawmakers to address what he called unsustainable debt. Fiat Chrysler is hiring. The Wall Street Journal says the automaker plans to spend $4.5 billion to expand factory operations in Michigan, adding about 6,500 jobs in the state. The AP reports the plan would mean the first new auto assembly plant in Detroit in almost three decades. The company plans to assemble more SUVs and pickup trucks, as well as hybrid and all-electric versions. Much more news ahead, but first, a quick thank you to today's sponsor, FabFitFun. You'll hear me talk a lot about FabFitFun right now because the spring box is only available for so long. They always sell out, and this one is a must-have. If you don't know yet, FabFitFun is a seasonal subscription box with full-size beauty, fitness, fashion, and lifestyle products all in one box. And I repeat, full-size. And the spring box is great. You get so much in it, from designer sunglasses to high-quality skincare, and that's just the beginning. Plus, you can customize some of the products to make sure you are getting all of your favorites. 
And it's such great value. FabFitFun retails for $49.99, but with every box, you get a value of more than $200. Plus, the Newsworthy listeners can use the coupon code NEWS for $10 off your first box. Just go to FabFitFun.com and use the code NEWS, N-E-W-S, and you'll get $10 off your first box. Go ahead and make it feel like your birthday four times a year. Now, back to the news. Two new things to know about the Federal Trade Commission, or FTC. First, there's a new task force all about taking on big tech. The goal is to basically keep an eye on big tech companies like Facebook and Google and make sure any mergers don't hurt competition and ultimately hurt consumers. Also of note this week, the FTC brought its first case against using fake reviews to sell online products. TechCrunch reports the company Cure Encapsulations is accused of making false claims about weight loss supplements and paying a third-party website to write fake reviews on Amazon. They've apparently agreed to settle. Walmart greeters will now be called customer hosts, and the new name comes with some new requirements and controversy. NPR reports people with physical disabilities feel targeted by the policy change because a customer host must be able to stand, climb a ladder, collect carts, and lift 25 pounds. Walmart says it'll give workers with disabilities more time to deal with the job change, but some employees who lost their jobs have already filed a lawsuit. So what are the most in-demand jobs right now? Yahoo Finance made a list of jobs with the most openings in 2019 in each U.S. state using data from the Bureau of Labor Statistics. The report found food preparers are needed the most in 20 different states across the country, including Utah, Illinois, and Rhode Island. There are the most openings for cashiers in 16 states like Connecticut and Arizona. California, New Mexico, and West Virginia have openings and more growth expected for personal care aides. You can see the full list and the map in today's show notes. Olivia Moultrie. That probably will not be the last time you hear her name. She's a 13-year-old professional soccer player, sort of, who is making history. The New York Times says she just signed a deal with a sports agency and an endorsement deal with Nike that pretty much started her pro career. Although technically players must be 18 to play in the National Women's Soccer League. When she was just 11, by the way, Moultrie became the youngest girl soccer player to publicly accept a college scholarship offer. And now she's the youngest to officially give that up to go pro. Her Nike deal was reportedly worth more than a four-year full-ride scholarship. We now know who will officially take Kathy Lee Gifford's spot on the fourth hour of the Today Show. It's Jenna Bush Hager. She'll be co-hosting with Hoda Kotb. A few months ago, Gifford said she'll be leaving the show in April after 11 years there to work on some other projects. Jenna Bush Hager has filled in before. She's an author, journalist, and the daughter of former President George W. Bush. Coming soon to Las Vegas, Janet Jackson. Variety says this is Jackson's first Las Vegas residency, and it's called Metamorphosis. The show starts in May and will center around Jackson's life. Of course, you can expect dancing and all of her hit songs. In fact, the show will feature a 30-year anniversary of her album, Rhythm Nation. Tickets go on sale this weekend. And that's it for today. But remember, you can always read more about the stories we talked about at thenewsworthy.com. Just click episodes and look for today's date. Thank you so much for listening. The Newsworthy is ready for you to listen every weekday by four in the morning. I'll be back with more news tomorrow. Have a great day.